The next skill we'd like to demonstrate is the venous cutdown. The venous cutdown is a very important part of the armamentarium when taking care of the traumatically injured patient. As we previously described, there are two places on the body where you can do the cutdown, on the medial aspect of the ankle and also at the elbow, as we demonstrated on the landmarks previously. Uh, there are several things that you want to make sure you have prior to doing a cut down. You want to make sure that you have the proper equipment. Things that you need at your disposal are a, a number 15 blade, a number 11 blade, you want an angiocath, or occasionally, alternatively, you might actually use the end of an IV tubing uh, to place within the vessel. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a couple of mosquito clamps, and some 2O silk. Uh, so once again, the way this procedure takes place is you want to identify the landmarks. And if you recall, the landmark on, on the uh, ankle is on the medial malleolus. You're going to go about one finger breadth or one centimeter above and one centimeter medial to this. And this is where you should find your saphenous vein. First thing you're going to do is make sure that you clean off the area with some betadine. You're then going to make an incision of about uh, one to two centimeters using a 15 blade over where you suspect the vessel is going to be. And you want to be careful not to carry this too deep as you can actually damage the vessel prior to finding it. So you can carry this through the skin and the subcutaneous tissues. Once you've made your skin incision through the skin and subcutaneous tissues, now the key is to take your mosquito clamps, pushing down against the bone and trying to run in line with the vessel right against the bone. And what this does is actually divides that subcutaneous tissue. The goal here is you're trying to isolate the vein on either side. And so I'm spreading on either side of where I think the vein is here. And I'm actually beginning to see it come into view. And now what I'm going to do is use the mosquito clamp tips and turn them over 180 degrees and come under the vessel next to the bone and try to hook the vessel as you can see I've done in this picture. Now I've got the vessel up and now the key here is you want to take uh, a silk suture and actually pass it uh, on either side of this vessel. One trick I like to use here is just to use one piece of silk folded in half, taking the center of that and pulling it through on both sides. Now I have this looped um, silk through. I'm going to cut it. And now what I have is essentially two pieces of silk, one above and one below. Now you're going to want to tie the end that's down at the ankle because you want flow to go towards the head. So I'm going to tie this down. And the next step here is you want to make sure that uh, you cut the vessel uh, at a, a kind of an angle but not completely transect the vessel so that you can get the IV into it. And one of the tricks that you can do for that is if you imagine that this piece of IV tubing uh, is the uh, vessel, you will place the, uh, the 11 blade perpendicular to the vessel going from one side to the other as you see here and then angling it up and out towards the foot. And what this does is raises a flap that you can then effectively place your IV into. Okay, let's do that on the vessel. Uh, at this point, it's useful to have an assistant who can uh, hold on to the suture for you on your vessel. And I'm going to grab the other end of this and bring the vessel up into my field. And now I'm going to place the 11 blade perpendicular to the vessel through and through to the other side and then angle it up and away. And now you see I've raised a bit of a flap there. And through this flap, I can now place my angiocath Angle, aiming it up towards the head. Relax a little bit. And now that's in the vessel. I can now place my IV tubing to this and tie this in place. And we now have a functioning line at the ankle that we can deliver high volumes of fluid to.